Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So, Dragon Play Gamer UK, and I am back in Station Ears, um, making a video that has been requested several times by people, which is basically how do you make a simple advanced furnace? Now, there's lots of videos on YouTube about how to use the advanced furnace. Uh, a lot of them are very complicated, though. They have spaghetti of pipes, they have IC programmers, they have tanks of hot gas, cold gas tanks of warm gas uh, and all kinds and you've got to switch the tanks in depending on what you want that's great if you know what you're doing and in the late gameplay but in the early gameplay or early to mid gameplay you don't need all that you can actually make all of the ingots so all this astro, astro alloy in canal wasp alloy hast alloy and stellite they're the second tier alloys and the first tier alloys is constantan invos steel solder and electrum uh, very simply, you don't need all these pipes and things. Now, the most simple way to use this furnace, and when I say simple, I mean it is simple, it's more, more or less the same way as you use the basic furnace, is just to throw some oxide and volatiles in. So, if we throw in, I don't know, um, 12 volatiles, and just click that until it uh, opens again. There we go. And six oxide, because the ratio is two to one. Don't forget two volatiles for each oxide. And I hit the button. You can see we've got a reaction. We've now got a furnace, so the temperature's climbing and the pressure's climbing. Now that will do for all of these metals and a few of these alloys. You can deal with it that way. So, for example, if I want to make steel, I don't need anything special. I've got the pressure in there, I've got the temperature in there. If we look at what steel requires, it requires a temperature above 900 K and a pressure between 1 megapascal and 100 megapascals. So that's a broad range of pressure and a broad range of temperature. And you find that for all of these ingots, it tend to be a broad range of numbers for temperature and pressure. So, simple, just throw some oxide in, throw some volatiles in, set it going, and you've got a furnace. Now, if I want to make steel, I can just dump in there. 50, 100, 150 iron. So now if we look now, we've got 150 iron. If I was to pull the lever now, in fact, let's do that, we will get out 150 gram bar of iron. But we want to make steel, so I can't just throw that bar back in there. And now if I add, oop, wait, opening again, it's got to process that iron. And there we go, that's done. If now I just throw in 50 coal, that will process that. And we now have 200 seal. Bang. There we go. 200 seal. Simple as that. All I did was throw some volatiles and some coal, uh, some oxide in there, and I can make whatever I want. And that will work for copper. Let's see the handle open. Um, and the other one you'll use a lot is gold. And even silica to make the use for making glass and plastic and there we go so I've done nothing special I've literally just thrown some volatile oxide in there got the pressure and temperature up and I can smelt all the main metals basic metals so tier I'm in fact a tier one alloy which is the steel so we can do all of this you don't really need to do the silver or the um, nickel to be fair, you can just throw them in as allies when you need them. But uh, you do will be using these ones from time to time. So let's just dump that down there for the moment. So that's the simplest way to do that. And when you're finished, if you know if the pressure gets too low or the temperature gets too low, you can simply, as you can see here, I've got the output straight through to a uh, valve and insulate vent. And as long as I step away from that, I can open that. I don't actually need that vent there. But I'll leave it there anyway. I don't need that valve there, sorry. Um, I can just turn this on. Close all these. That's flashing because it says one of the things is disconnected. Um, which one's the output? This one. Oh, I might have to connect the input. I will have to connect the input. So just bear with me a moment. Where did I put my pipes? There we go. And quickly add a spanner. So you do have to have both things attached but you don't have to have them connected 
So there we go. That's just throw it over there for the moment. That's been blown away by the gas coming out of there. So that has got something attached to it, but it's not attached to the input or anything. It's literally just so the furnace will let you turn on the, va the pumps. Because the Vance furnace has a pump for blowing gas out and a one for sucking gas in, and that's to blow one out. And as you can see, I've got it set to 70 litres a minute, and we've just blown all that hot gas out. And say we, you know, we've been smelting a few things. It got a bit cold. The pressure got a bit high. You could do that. Like I say, you don't really need that. We can get rid of that. It can go away. And we replace that with a bit of pipe because the output's been controlled by this uh, pump here. So that's one way of doing it. So another way of doing it, and, and that is the most simple way of doing this, you may struggle to create anything in the tier 1 alloys, alloys other than steel by that, doing that, but it is possible by messing around with that input and out, uh, output valve to get to the point where you can smelt them. However, there is an easier way. So the easier way is let me disconnect this pipe there. I want to connect, oh where's the pipe gone? Pick you up. I want to connect you there and you there. So what I've got now is I've connected the input and the output together and they're all connected to an insulated tank. This is all insulated by the way. The pipes are insulated because otherwise you'll bleed heat through the pipes. So now we have an empty this should be in it. Well, they'll have a little bit of gassing, so just connect it from the um, furnace, but it'll not be a lot. Yeah, there's 5.5 pascals of energy in uh, gas in there. There's less than, I would say, 0.5 of a mole in everything. Okay, so that is pretty much empty. There's nothing, as far as I'm concerned, in here. So what we can do, again, is... Let's just get rid of you for a moment. Give me away a little bit same as before although this may be challenging because the sun's now up um, let's see if we can get 10 or 12 of these 12 of those and then I need six of these six of those and they're evaporating because um, it's daylight and the temperature here is above zero so I've now put 12 volatiles and 6 oxide in there, ignite it, and we've got pressure and temperature again. And this is the same as before, you can just throw it all through here. So we've just got some iron here, so again just throw some iron in. It's above the minimum temperature for iron, if we look at iron, what does iron need? It needs above 800k and above 100 kilopascals up to 100 megapascals. So anything above 800k and 100 kilopascals and you'll get a lump of iron out the other side. And that green light says, yeah, that's done. We will get a lump of iron. And there it is. So that is another way of doing it. But this time, what we can do, if we want to make something a bit more complicated, say we want to make, let's have a look. What do we want to make? Uh, constant time, what does that take? Copper and nickel, 50 copper, 50 nickel. So I have, there's a nickel. And there is 50 copper. Let's stick in my backpack. Doesn't matter, it's an ingot. You can still put ingots in. So I'll stick the copper in. Set the process, stick the nickel in. Now, what do we need for this one? We need above 1k temperature, so above 1000 degrees Kelvin cent uh, temperature, and between 20 and 100 megapascals of temp uh, pressure. So the limiting factors here is that temperatures a little bit higher than the others but it's a pressure that's the main thing so I'll close that for a moment now doing nothing else we've got 17.1 megapascals in there it is coming down because the furnace is uninsulated and it is slowly cooling so how can I get that pressure up to uh, 20 megapascals well I've got my volatiles here so let's just put I don't know two of those in another oxide let them react and they are pushing the pressure up. You see the pressure is going up to 18. 
it will stop probably before we get to 20 because that wasn't a lot yeah it's going to probably top out about 18.8 .8. so again we just do the same again Uh, we just put a bit more volatile oxide in there and now uh, we've got the right temperature right pressure lights gone green eject that there's our inconel now inconel is quite an easy one to make so let's just um dump that will probably get blown away in the storm in a minute inconel is quite an easy one to make let's go for a more challenging one so invar what does invar need invar is still the pressure's way up there but the temperature's a little bit higher uh, and there's quite a narrow temperature band. So this one is you have between 1.2, um, 1,200 degrees Kelvin and 1,500 degrees Kelvin, and the pressure's got between 18 and 20. So we've already got the pressure in there. We know that um, iron and nickel. So I'm going to need nickel. Just bear with me a second. So there we go. I have got uh, 50 nickel and 50 iron. I believe that's what it needs. A 50-50 mix. Yeah. The pressure is 20 still, the temperature is above 1.2 and below 1.5, we haven't had to do anything. Um, if our temperature had dropped, in fact, let's let it drop it, um, bear with me a moment, I'll, I'll push the temperature down. So here we go, you can see the temperature and the pressure uh, has gone down a bit. Pressure's still alright, but the temperature's a bit low. So what we can do is, same as before, let's just make some space in our hand. Stick some oh, volatiles and ice in there. I haven't done quite ratio. Now let's push the temperature, the pressure up, but the temperature is also going up. So I need to put another volatile in there to make sure we're getting a good mix. Temperature's coming up, but the pressure's also going up, so we obviously need a bit more. So let's put six of that in. Three, oh, that's two. Three of that in. What's that doing to the temperature? Temperature's going up. We'll get to 1.2, probably not. But look at the pressure. The pressure's climbing way too high. Now, obviously, we don't want all that pressure. So, what we can do, because this is all connected to that tank, is we can open the output valve a little bit. Don't need to wind it wide open. We just need to open it sort of one or two ticks. So, you know, 20 litres per second. That will quickly bring the pressure down. Now, if you notice the pressure's coming down, but the temperature's not changing much. Now, we've still not got enough pressure in there. Um, so, hold on a moment. Let me just... Right, what are we at? So, we've vented too much pressure now. We're down to 8.3, but the temperature's not there. So, what can we do? Okay, so... Let's... Put four volatiles in, and a couple of oxide. That'll bring the pressure back up and it's bringing the temperature up. So this isn't as easy as other ways to do it, but you see you can control the pressure and the temperature by using this tank as a buffer. Right, so now we have the right temperature, well believe between 1.2 and 1.5 kilokelvin, but the pressure's too low. Now we vented that gas into that tank, so let's bring some back in. Now that's colder than the gas in here, so it will affect the temperature, but if you're careful, you can start bleeding it back in, and as long as you keep an eye on the temperature. So up to 1.5, let's just uh, up that again, a bit more. Can we get to 18 before the temperature drops below 1.2? Probably is not. Oh, well, maybe. Just waiting for that green light to come on. No, we didn't get a green light there. Ha! Huh. I'll tell you what the problem is. <laughs> Um, there's the iron. <laughs> and there's a nickel. Now this will again affect the temperature and pressure. Yeah, so the temperature's dropped a little bit. The pressure's gone up a little bit. So temperature's dropped, so... One of them. Two of them, sorry. One of them. Temperature's up, but with pressure's too high, so venting that. And this is all it is, sometimes just a bit of playing with these numbers. Right, there we go, green light, hit that. And there we have our ingot of Invar. Now that is um, about as best as you're going to do with this configuration, I think. I mean, it is possible 
and I have let's dump both of these actually let's close all these valves I have made some of the well, I do make some of these uh, more challenging alloys with this method but there's a better way and that is to let's just okay let's just close that let us just vent all of you back into that tank let's try to empty it quickly I don't worry don't worry too much about anything else okay so we've got the pressure out of there that's all back in that tank effectively and that was the old me this is a new me I realized while making this video that I'd forgotten some important pieces so one of the things I want to make clear is that if you have a furnace connected with insulated pipes on the input and the output all connected together that just allows us to vent the whole system uh, and connected to an insulated tank what you can do is rather than having to blow all the gas out all the time just turn that off while I remember you can instead use the tank as a buffer so it just sticks um, oh struggling because it's hot in here let's see if it's 20 in there 20 we go let's just keep pushing that until we um get the hatch open and i need to try and get 10 oxide no oxide well that's just evaporate away there we go 10. it's difficult to do during the day because the temperature is above zero degrees and it wants to sublimate away in your hand but we've got 20 volatiles and 10 oxide in there Two to one ratio just press that to ignite it all and if we bring this tablet down we can see that we've got the oxygen or the oxide o2 and the volatiles uh, percentages decreasing as they burn away inside the furnace that in turn has pushed the temperature of the furnace up and the pressure of the furniture uh, one thing to take note of here is the temperature because that furnace was clear there's nothing in there we're able to hit over 2000 degrees Kelvin. Now that's important when you're creating stellite. If we quickly go to stellite, you can see you need 1.8 K or 1800 Kelvin um, and between 10 and 20 megapascals to make stellite. That can be challenging sometimes if there are waste products in your furnace. But for now, I just want to show you. So let's say we want to make some iron, throw some iron in there, let that smelt down. And there we have a bar of iron. Now we want to make that you know, say we've gone away and done so we've vent all that off, we've done what we wanted to do, vent all the gas back into this tank. Um, so you can see the pressure in the tank is going up and it's filling up with volatiles, pollution, CO2, nitrogen, and a little bit of O2. So just let that run for a bit. And you'll notice that the temperature is 1.5, uh, 1,500 degrees C, or 1,800 degrees Kelvin. Now, if we come back here, this tank is now empty. So let's close that. And this should, unless they've changed things, pretty much maintain that temperature, 1,500. 45 degrees centigrade it's not dropping and it shouldn't drop because it's meant to be a perfect insulator so we've now got a tank for us for gas so now say we want to make some steel rather than having to use more oxide because oxide and uh, volatiles can be in a bit of a short supply towards the beginning of the game what you can do is you can dump in all your materials let's, let's just dump these in to begin. oh we'll have to pull some gas in let's just Teeny weeny little bit of gas just to get it start processing the metal. And to make steel, as you know, it's uh, 3 to 1 iron and coal. So there's 3 lots of 50 coal. It's got too cold again, let's just little blast of heat. There we go. And then uh, 50 coal. As you can see, we're already getting pressure in the chamber because there are gases in the metals in the ores which are being off uh, vented off inside the chamber but that's no way near hot enough to make steel it's only 431 i think we need 900 kelvin so now we've got a nice big tank of hot gas just bring that in 
and you see the temperature and pressure rapidly rising. Once that temperature goes above 900, we should get the green light. And there we go, we've got the green light, so we can just stop the gas coming in and eject our steel. So now I've got 200 grams of steel, and then you vent that back to your tank. But as you'll notice, that gas is now at just under 900 degrees. So all in, what it's going to do is it's going to drop the overall temperature of this tank, which is why I put a lot in the furnace to begin with. Obviously, the more volume there is in there to begin with, the longer it'll take for the whole volume to reduce down in temperature. And as you can see, the temperature is now down to 1,000, or just over 1,000. Uh, 1070 to 1080 degrees centigrade or 1300 degrees Kelvin or thereabouts. So you do that and then you play a game a bit more and you come along and you suddenly realize, oh, I need some gold. So again, close the hatch, bring some gas in, dump your gold in there, set the process, pull the handle, and out it spits. As long as that light's green, you're good to go. So you can, this is a good way of just using one lot of gas for quite a time, to be honest. If you if you really fill that up, I mean, that can take 60 uh, megapascals of pressure, and we are currently at 5. So you can potentially put a lot of gas into this tank to begin with. I wouldn't say go all the way to 50. I would never go above 40 megapascals. But you don't even need to do that, you know, 10 is more than enough to keep it going for a while and to do it you just literally volatiles oxide let it burn for a few seconds pump it out in the tank volatiles oxide let it burn for a few seconds pump it out in the tank but the pressure in there is up to where you want to be i've deliberately not gone too high because i want to vent all this in a moment and the more pressure in here just longer it takes but as you can see that temperature again still staying up around about a thousand and we, you know, we smelted 200 grams of steel, we smelted 50 grams of uh, gold, 50 grams of iron, and we have an uninsulated furnace here. You can see the temperature dropping in the furnace. So that's one thing I wanted to make clear. You can just use a insulated tank with some insulated pipes, connect the input and the output as a hot gas buffer. And that works quite well. And when the temperature gets below 900 degrees Kelvin, or what's that about, 230 degrees centigrade, no, sorry, 630 degrees centigrade, then it becomes unusable unless you're making anything other than something like silver, uh, solder, sorry, in which case you just want to vent the gas out of there, out of the system. Don't stand too close to the pipe, because if you look here, the temperature, that's the outside temperature. I stand here. Yeah, it's nearly 900, 800, and what that's doing is just emptying this tank. You can see we're down to 2 megapascals and dropping. I'm just going to let that drop for a little bit. Uh, one, but while that's dropping, I want to just make some reconfigure my furnace slightly. So let's just take that out, take that out, go up there. Nope, I want that that way. That way, and about pipes. So let me take that one. Oops. Like so. So all I've done now is I've left the um, tank connected to the output along with the pump. The uh, input is connected to a buffer tank for storing unburned fuel. And they are both connected through a fuel pump. Uh, fuel mixer to an oxygen tank and a volatiles tank. Now what I've done here as well is a stuck in little filtration system. As you can see this has got two nitrogen filters in it and what's happening here is I have the input to this filter connected to the oxygen pipe from this tank and the, the um, ice crusher and everything, it's all common pipe. Into the input I have the waste pipe connected back to that tank and the input side as well and the filtration or the filtered gas is venting to the atmosphere and because we have nitrogen filters in here and if we look at oxide we can see there's 23 moles of oxygen and 3 moles of nitrogen so all we're doing is filtering out that nitrogen and blowing it out in the atmosphere 
leaving just the oxygen as a waste gas which is then going back in the tank and after a few minutes of that running you will see that oh, get into a space we can see this tank is now all O2 and if we dump a little bit of um, oxide in here so wait that processing you'll see there's now some nitrogen in the system it's finished melting the ice but that nitrogen will now start to go down and there we go it's now going back down again and that filter will slowly filter out all the nitrogen so this means that's going to leave us with once that's finished doing it that will leave us with pure oxygen and pure volatiles so we need to set our mixture because now we kind of previously set for an imbalance of nitrogen oxygen and volatiles so this time we actually need 33 that one 33 67 so it's 33 parts oxygen to 67 parts fuel that's input one that's input two if we look here input one 33 percent input two 67 percent and that will give us a perfect fuel mixture once we've filtered all the nitrogen i mean the quantity of nitrogen there is mi uh, minuscule it's less than half a percent but we let it filter out quickly while we're waiting i'll have a slurp of coffee one thing i will point out is that um these filters don't run down particularly quickly oh, particularly quickly uh just switch over as you can see that one's still 100 percent that one's 81 percent and i've processed one better part of 2000 moles of o2 and that's used like nine percent of a filter so the, the work they last quite a while if you were to do it the other way and stick oxygen filters in there uh, and have the that, that output connected back to the input and the waste pipe preventing the atmosphere so you'd be filtering the oxygen out of the system so you put it back in um, you would burn through the oxygen filters quicker because it's 90% oxygen 10% nitrogen so you're better off having the nitrogen filters in here and the waste pipe looping back into the input and then all you're doing is you're getting rid of the filtered the nitrogen that's what's coming out of here filtered nitrogen because we've got nitrogen filters that can blow off into the atmosphere and your yeah, oxygen will head back into the tank what are we at are we low enough you know what we're 97 uh, 99.7 that's more than adequate for what i want so stellite let's see what we need to make stellite this is the one that's going to cause you problems so it's silver silicon cobalt so let me just spawn in some silver and cobalt quickly and there we go i've got some silver cobalt and sil uh, silicon the mixture is 25 percent silver 25 percent cobalt 50 percent silicon so that's in this case that's 50 50 uh 50 cobalt 50 silver and 100 silicon which makes 200 so 25 percent 200 is 50. i know you're not stupid i know your maths will be able to work that one out but just bear with me um so to make stellite we need a temperature above 1.8 kelvin uh to 100,000 degrees kelvin so that's 1,800 degrees kelvin 100,000 degrees kelvin and a pressure between 10 megapascals and 20 megapascals now what pressure do we have in our tank here see so that's 1.5 uh, it just about get there i think but i'm not going to bother with that i've now got pure oxygen sorry i've now got fresh fuel being made once i switch this on how is that doing the nitrogen's down to 0.15 percent so i'm fine with that switch this on and in this tank we will now have a mixture mainly of fuel of volatiles and oxygen just let those build up a little bit uh one about 100 moles of each to make sure i'm not running these tanks flat no that's 700k that's 500k so what do we at 1.5 kilopascals I will keep doing that 
230 kilopascals of fuel. Just make sure that the output is off, input is off, and let's bring some gas in. I don't want to bring a lot in to begin with. Hit the ignite button, it'll start burning. Because I want to, I just want enough to get the materials mixing. So stick the cobalt in, stick the silver in. Now, silver contains oxygen, I believe, which will, you can see, the temperature's climbing there. And then the silicon, the pressure's climbing again, and the other silicon, and you know what? <laughs> it's as simple as that. There we go. There's a stellite. Well, that was easier than I was expecting it to be. What I was expecting to happen is actually the temperature to drop below 1800 degrees, in which case you just bring in a bit more of the fuel and then it mix with the, the gas in the chamber. But we could bring it in pretty much pure fuel there with a really good uh, burning ratio. It converted it really quickly. What other ones do we want to have a look at? So that's stellite. Hastaloy, I've never really had. I don't think I've ever used Hastaloy for anything. It must be used for something, but I can't think one. Temperature's not too bad. It's just a very tight temperature range you've got to achieve. Pressures, okay. That's going to be the problem part, trying to get that 5th degrees window there. 5 megapascal window is not too bad. So another one that might be a little bit challenging for you is a wasp, wasp alloy. Mainly because of the pressure it needs and the quite low temperature. So obviously you can't bring fresh fuel in to get the pressure up because that will just also push the temperature up. So in that case, what I would typically do is either dump some water ice in there to help push the temperature up and bring the, push the pressure up, bring the temperature down, or go back to using our waste tank. So we could um, disconnect that. I'm probably going to need a bit more pipe. Oh, I've got some pipe in my backpack. Connect you through to there, and now I'll just connect it back to my fuel tank, my gas tank. And this, it's going to be hot. Um, what is that? About 1.6 kilokelvin, which is is quite hot. It's actually it's probably too hot. But we'll bring some in. No, that's the wrong one. Bring some gas in and start dumping our materials in. Now we need 50 megapascals, which is a high temperature, high pressure, and this furnace is going to start groaning before we get anywhere near it. So this one needs 25% silver, 25% nickel, 50% lead. So two stacks of lead. One, two. Now what is our furnace? Is it fuel or... Uh, it's burnt most of fuel. That's quite good. So the pressure is up to 29, but the temperature is way too high. So we can at this point dump some ice in. Now we can dump some water ice in, that will cool it, but that will also have an effect on the pressure. As you can see. What temperature is up a limit on the temperature? 800 degrees. So still 300 degrees off. 210 degrees off. Now I could dump some oxide in there. As long as we don't put any more volatiles in there, the temperature should not rise, but the pressure will. So the temperature is 1040 degrees Kelvin, and the furnace is starting to complain, but we're still nowhere near that 50 we need. Stick some oxide in, bringing the temperature down, pushing the pressure up. Remember, we need above 50 megapascals. So let's dump the other 25 in. Temperature's coming down, pressure's going up. I just need to get a bit more oxide. Let's dump a 50 in there. No, that's a bit too risky. Let's dump a 25 in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm too chicken to stick a 50 in. <laughs> so 
So still 120 degrees away from where we need to be. And the pressure's still not quite 50. Okay, now we've hit the pressure. And we're now 94, 93 degrees away from where we need to be. At this point I'll probably try to drop a little bit more water right in, so let's just, I don't know. Let's stick 10 in. So what do we have at the moment? 8.52. Coming down. Let's stick another 10 in. 10, 11, close enough. There we go, we've now got the pressure and we've now got the temperature. So we can eject that and get our wasp alloy. That is a challenging one to make. The other reason it's a challenging one to make is not only is it um, difficult to get the pressure and the temperature, you've got to mess around using ices really to do it. You can't use fuel because fuel is just, it comes in and burns too hot. In which case you need to be pulling cold gas in from somewhere. And this is where you see the guys who have a hot tank, a cold tank, and a medium temperature tank, and a load of piping and a load of ICs, so they can get these extreme alloys made um, easily. But you, you don't need all that. You can do it by just messing around with the ices. As long as you keep an eye on the pressure and the temperature, and you throw some ices in, if you're going to use um, oxide, you must make sure there's no volatiles in there, or so it will react with the volatiles. So, Little experiment, it's going to quick save. If we stuck some volatiles in there, watch what happens. Look at the pressure. So, cognition critical, health critical, suit damage, temperature critical. And that is why you don't put oxide and volatiles into a high pressure furnace. It's one or the other. And I recommend oxide with no volatiles. Anyway guys, uh, I hope you found that useful. Um, like I said, there's various ways of doing this, but you don't need all the pipes and things. This is probably the most complicated setup I usually work with. Um, you can make pretty much anything with these three setups. Like I say, hopefully you'll find that useful. Please let me know in the comments if you do or you don't. If you want to see me showing anything else, then please let me know. So now, strike like game motion you. Good night.